In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to set up your painting and your camera to get a good image of your painting onto your camera. I think it's really important to learn how to do that properly. 99% of people, 99.99% of people will never see your uh, painting in person. They're only going to see an image that you post on the internet. So learn how to do it properly. Um, and in this video, I'm only explaining to you how to set up your painting and your camera and how to take a good image. But once you've got the image on your camera, you've got to do some post-processing work. And that just means, you know, once you offload it onto the computer and process it with some software, you can really ruin your image. Or even by not doing things, your camera can automatically do things and, and ruin your image. So it's real important to do that properly. So go to the web address at the bottom of the screen and you can find all kinds of really good and easy to follow instructions on how to uh, do all the post-processing work once you get your images onto your camera. So I'm going to show you how to photograph your painting after it's finished and varnished. Um, the simplest way to do it is to simply put your uh, painting on your easel in your studio and this is assuming that you have a studio that's got a dark behind you as you sit at your easel like I explained in how to set up an artist studio and that's important because we don't want any glare on the painting okay so now that my I'm in a good studio it's dark back behind my camera always has to be dark behind your camera no matter how you photograph your painting but so it's on the easel and the only thing about working in a studio that's a problem and is the top of your painting is going to get more light assuming that your light is up above you the top of your painting is going to get more light than the bottom simply because it's closer to the light and that's not as apparent when you're sitting here looking at it in person but once you take your photograph and you bring it into Photoshop or you know look at it on your computer um, it can be um, very obvious if your painting's big. This painting is small enough that I can photograph it in my studio without any trouble but if I had a large painting say, say taller than 25 or 30 inches then it really starts to become a problem where you have way more light at the top than you do at the bottom. So if you have it, so if your painting's larger than say 20 inches tall, then I would do it the second way, which I'm going to show you, which is to take it outdoors and shoot it in direct sunlight. But let me go ahead and show you how to shoot it in a, in a studio, and this is assuming that your painting is not too big. I've got it on my easel. I'm actually wearing a dark shirt so I don't put a bunch of glare into the painting. The next thing is I've got a camera that's a manual camera. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't have to be a super expensive camera. It could even be a small, um, small little camera. This is a DSLR camera, which is you know, more expensive. But the main thing is that you need to be able to set your camera manually. And what I mean is if your camera has an, is, can only be set to automatic, then it's, if your painting is dark, especially like this one, um, then it's going to always be overexposed. And so in order to set the exposure right and not to overexpose your painting, you've got to use a manual camera, no matter what you do. And that's the biggest problem with trying to use a cell phone, even though a cell phone may have a high, res high resolution ability to shoot really big pictures, the problem is a lot of cell phones, you can't adjust the exposure manually, and so everything gets it overexposed and you can't do anything about it. So I've got a manual camera, I've put it on my tripod and I've m gone up to my painting and measured right in the middle of the painting and then come over to my tripod and it should be at the same height. My painting is perfectly vertical, it's not leaning backwards or forwards, it's straight up and down. And then my, uh, so as long as I go like, put my hand right at about in the middle and if my lens is at the same height, which it is, then I know my painting is going to be square. So the next thing is I don't want to shoot it from over here, and I don't want to shoot it from way over here. So I'm right in the middle, same height, painting square, I'm ready to go. The next obvious thing is to not crop your painting, to shoot it just a little beyond the edges so that you're getting the entire painting. Don't crop in when you're taking your picture. So my, my camera's in position. Um, you, I'm going to always shoot raw if I have that ability, and if I don't have the ability to shoot raw, then I'm going to shoot the highest JPEG, the largest JPEG setting that I can set my camera to. Okay, so once I've got it and it's set to RAW, I'm ready to take pictures. And the only thing to do at this point is to just to make sure that I get, uh, I bracket it like crazy. And that, all that means is that I'm going to shoot some that are way too dark 
and then I'm going to go up a little bit, make it a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, until I go from the very darkest, and I might shoot six or seven exposures. There's nothing wrong with, you know, you can't shoot too many. So shoot six or seven exposures, starting from way too dark to way too bright, and that way you know you've got the right exposure. So that's pretty much it for how to photograph uh, your painting in your studio with a tripod. Um, if you don't have a tripod, you can always just stack some books on a little table right in front of your... Uh, uh, painting and do it that way, like this. Um, if your painting is really large, so, uh, so large that it's getting way more light at the top of your painting than the bottom in your studio, then the best thing to do is to take it outside like this, have one person stand in the shadow of the building or the shadow of a large tree, it doesn't matter, um, with the camera, and then have the other person who's holding the painting prop it up on two pieces of wood or whatever and lean it, and you're right on in the sun right on the edge of the shadow of the building, and that person, uh, hold, have them hold the painting, and you want to pitch it back so that the line from the camera to the painting is perpendicular to the painting surface. Okay, so get your angle right, and then um, once you've done that, just take your pictures and do the same thing where you, get, you bracket your, your photographs and take some that are way too dark and some that are way too light, and that way you can pick out the best one later when you do your post-processing on your computer. So that's pretty much it for how to photograph your painting.